Whitney Belkowitz, President and CEO of Intelligent Concrete. And I'm David Harris. I'm the Principal Engineer for Intelligent Concrete. And we are going to be answering a question today. David, this is from DEYC3. He is asking, David, would split tensile, you know how much David loves split. <laughs> this is going to be good. <laughs> be, would this test be a good way to simulate shear forces along the bond line of a concrete overlay? No. <laughs> Very direct. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. We have to understand the split cylinder test. We've talked about this before. It's a test where you take a cylinder, or I guess you could take a cube, you put a a bar on it. Right. In the United States it's a one inch wide bar. Sure, right, right. In Europe it varies by the size of the specimen. You apply a load in this direction and it's called split cylinder because the idea of it is it'll form a failure plane along here and split open. So the problem with trying to test a feature is trying to make it make the boundary condition correct and make it split on that bond layer. Right. So, you know, we can argue that we might be able to position the bond layer in here and sure. apply the load and then split it. But Isn't pull-off testing going to be the best approach for that? Absolutely. Well, that's kind of where I was headed. Sorry. No, that's, that's <laughs> quite right. So even if we manage to get this to split on the bond, yeah, right. is it sheer? I see split is compression. You're you're squishing it. It's compression this direction, tension right. this direction. So is it simulating shear forces? No. No. So your thought, you know, if you really want to look at bonding of different surfaces, then probably the, if we want tension, right. direct tension right. is be, ideal, which would is be the best way to get it. Right. Shear, I mean when I taught sophomores in college, I I'd say, what does shear look like? And they'd go Mm -hmm. And that's right. That's, right. What, that's what shear stress looks like. So we need a test to measure shear. We need a test that puts it in a shear boundary right. condition. At the Bureau, we had shear machines that, that we could do that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so we could test bond on surfaces. And there's been some other work of uh, people to try to simulate it, but the best way to do it is to apply shear on the surface to, right. to measure the shear. So that's... Right. Um, it's pretty simple, really. Right. We want the right boundary condition for what, we, what we're what we trying to measure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that's a huge piece with testing. And, I mean, great question, but you've got to make sure that you're, depending on what data you're trying to collect, you've got to make sure that you're using the appropriate test to collect that data. Absolutely. You need the right boundary condition for this, right. what you're trying to measure. Right. So, so the answer, <laughs> the quick answer is no. no. <laughs> Thank you so much for your question. Like, subscribe, ding that bell for notifications. Go concrete. Be asshole.